Hey, this is Steph with Fishing Kits. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about Corydora barbel erosion around their mouth. Specifically to my tanks and my experience with them, with the two tanks that I have. We'll get into why quarries need their barbels, why they're important, and what I think the causes of barbel erosion were for me. So Corydoras have about six to eight barbels all around their mouth and they look like little whiskers. They use those barbels basically like little appendages, kind of like our hands, searching through you know, gravel, searching through sand, touching all sorts of surfaces and plants, anything that they can kind of feel around in order to detect food. I think they tend to be more nocturnal, so they're more active at night. And so if you think about it, it makes sense that they would have these barbels in order to be able to quote unquote see and be able to feel around in order to look for food and detect other things. So the big question we're asking today is, can quarries lose their barbels? And the sad answer is yes. Yes, they can. They can lose them. And if you're not fast enough, they can just be gone, I think, pretty permanently. Like, just be a little nubbin left there. And if the quarry is outcompeted by food or there's just too many tank mates and it can't get enough nutrition because it takes longer for the quarry to be able to search for, for food without the barbels, then most likely this quarry will probably die over time. That's sort of what happened to me. At one point a few months ago, I was looking very closely at the Adolfos when they finally came out, and I noticed that they had nubs. Like, they were pretty much gone. I pulled them all out, and I put them into this other tank. I wanted them to be separated. I wasn't sure I needed to figure out why that may have happened. When I looked at the other quarry, the Venezuelan quarry, they seem fine. There's no a hint of any barbel damage anywhere. They're quite happy. You could see how long and healthy and lustrous their barbels are. So it was kind of confusing. So I did a lot of research and the biggest reason that came up that I think is for the most part being debunked as a myth is the sharp gravel. I think for a long time, people were saying that sharp gravel caused barbel erosion. And I simply think that's not true because I have all sorts of gravel and rocks and sand in this tank and the Venezuelan quarry have absolutely no damage to their barbels. In fact, you can see it almost, they almost look like tentacles. They're so long and so healthy. Probably more likely is that one, bad water quality. So if you're not doing your water changes, the water can get dirty. The substrate is dirty. You have to gravel vac. That's one reason. The other reason is malnutrition, underfeeding your fish, maybe not feeding them the right foods. The other reason is stress, either by bullying tank mates or maybe an environment that's not right for them. And then there's also the disease of fin rot. So fin rot can also attack barbels and that can also be a cause for barbel erosion. In my specific case, I think that it was probably due to stress. I don't think that my fish don't have fin rot. I change the water out like to 50% almost weekly. Uh, and so the water quality is actually really good. So in my case, I do believe that it was probably stress. Just because there are animals in here that are, you know, everyone's competing for the bottom. Um, the Adolfos are extremely shy. The ones that I have are extremely shy. They, they are so scared and they just hide all the time. The current is pretty high in here because of the gobies and the panagara. The Venezuelan quarries have no problem about it. They breed every two to three weeks and they spawn and have eggs. So they don't have an issue with this high flow water or even the tank mates. So I left them in there. But the Adolfos, I think maybe this is not the tank for them. So they're definitely in this much more calm and peaceful tank. Flow is much less. There's nothing else really on here to compete for food. Gobi plecos in here on the ground and some shrimp and that's it. I think they're much happier in here and I do see the growth coming back on their barbels. Unfortunately, one Cory does not have his barbels back. I don't think he's going to get it back. It's been about a few months. It just still looks like a nubbin. Like I call him no mouth. It's so sad. He'll stay in this tank forever and just kind of live a very peaceful life. I'll try to fill up the school to another, add another two so that they'll have five together. 
and be happy again and maybe come out a little more. So for me, I do think that it was a stress issue for my Adolfos. They didn't feel safe enough to go out and eat more often. They probably got infections and other ailments that came with the stress just due to not being comfortable in the tank. And that really is all on me as a uh, generally a pet owner. I would like to you know, provide my animals with the best environment and I didn't in this case. And I really feel badly about it, but I'm also trying to you know, grow with that and, and change and fix it. So hopefully in their new environment in this other tank, they'll feel a lot more comfortable to come out, to eat and just kind of grow back into being healthy little quarries the way they can be. Thank you so much for hanging out and listening and watching this video. If you enjoy the content, a like and maybe hit me up with a subscribe. Uh, if you have any stories about barbell erosion, your experience, I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear more about maybe how to prevent it. Any kind of information sharing is always awesome with me. So thank you very much and see you in the next one.